Hello learners. Hello learners of uh, Elimu Live. Um, today we are going to look at business grade 8. I'm your presenter Arthur Kibinji from ACK St. Michael Model Schools, Ongata Rongai. Um, I'm going to look at a topic called business and its environment. And under business and its environment, we are going to look at types of business enterprises. So, um, in grade eight, um, these are topic also that is uh, in, in form two, uh, business studies, the first topic in form two, and also in grade eight. So in grade eight, you're supposed to look at three types of business enterprises. And before I go there, a business enterprise is any organization that is uh, started by an individual or an organization um, with a name of making a profit. We said that the, main, the most important thing in any business is to make a profit. So a business enterprise is any organization started by an individual or a group of individuals with a name of making a profit. So um, in grade eight, you're going to look at three types of business enterprises. One, we're going to look at sole proprietorships. We are going to look at uh, we are going to look at partnerships, and lastly, we are going to look at cooperative societies, cooperative societies. But because of time that we have or co time constraints, today we shall we shall look at sole proprietorships uh, or sole proprietorship form of business. So number one, sole proprietorships. Before I go there, we have a list of things that we shall be looking at when we describe each or when we talk about each of these business enterprises. We are going to look at, one, uh, we are going to look at uh, the meaning, meaning of each. Two, we are going to look at uh, the formation of each. Three, we are going to look at the ownership of each. Four, we are going to look at the management, management of each. Five, we are going to look at sources of finance, sources of finance, or what we call capital. And uh, F, or lastly, we are going to look, okay, uh, before lastly, sorry, uh, we are going to look at advantages uh, and disadvantages. We are also going to look at dissolution. We are going to look at dissolution. We are going to look at, the last thing we are going to look at is dissolution. So, uh, sole proprietorships. So a sole proprietorship is any business that is started or run by one person. From the word, sole means one or single. And um, a sole proprietorship form of business unit or form of business enterprise is any business that is begun and managed by one person. And this person is called a sole trader, a sole trader, a sole proprietor, or a sole owner can be a sole. The, the person can be called a sole trader, a sole proprietor, or a sole owner. Sole means this person carries the idea and the brain of the whole business, looks for the money to start and run the business, and manages the business from A to Z. So um, that is the meaning. That is the meaning of a sole proprietorship. 
any business started by a single individual or a single person. And then on formation, on formation, so on formation, we say a sole proprietorship is uh, formed, uh, has got a few or requires a few legal procedures. When we talk about legal procedures, these are the requirements in law. For example, for you to start a business, uh, a sole proprietorship form of business, you only need a trading license, a trading license, um, which can be easily gotten from any county government offices next to, the, uh, to wherever you want to start your business. You just pop in pay a few uh, shillings and get a trading license that would expire at the end of every year. Uh, the good thing with sole, prop uh, sole proprietorships is that uh, unlike companies, com or for companies you pay every year, you, you must pay some money on top, but for sole proprietorships, you just account for your profits and loss through Kenya Revenue Authority by just doing your returns annually. So learners, uh, these are the simplest uh, form of business uh, enterprises that we have. And for that reason, they are the majority. They are the majority of the businesses that we have. These, we have to, we can say, uh, we can look at a uh, sole proprietorship in two ways. We can look at the service industry, service industry. In the service industry, examples of sole proprietorships include, we have the cobblers, we have the cobblers, cobblers. Uh, we have people like, um, we have hair, people who deal with hairdressing. We have, uh, um, we have hotel industries, in the, uh, personally owned hotel, hotels, industries. We have uh, private schools. We have private hospitals. These are people who give people services to earn and the, the, in, in, in a sole proprietorship. That is, you start your own hospital, that means that is a sole proprietorship. Schools and hospitals are a bit large, but uh, these others are a bit smaller. Then on, uh, on goods and services, people who offer goods, goods and services, the, uh, goods and, uh, sorry, goods, not services, services are here. On goods, we have farmers or people who deal with agriculture, agriculture the agricultural industry. Uh, we have people who uh, sell goods to us. We have the shopkeepers, or what we call small scale retailers or retailers. We have roadside sellers, roadside sellers. Uh, we also have uh, people like, um, we have vegetable stalls, vegetable stalls, the mamambogas. We have the border border people. Uh, we have the motorbike people, and then we have um, we also have people who have their personal uh, taxi vehicles. All these are simple sole proprietorship examples of sole proprietorships, and uh, these sole proprietorships began by this. Uh, person we are calling a sole trader or a sole proprietor or a sole owner are easy to form. That's what we're saying. You just need to pop in, get a trading license, and then start your own business. Number two, we look at uh, the ownership. We said these uh, sole proprietorships are owned by one person. They are owned by one person. They are owned by one person. And uh, this one person is the one who is uh, supposed to run the business. But in case this person is using the, the sole proprietorship as a side hustle, they may hire somebody. They may hire somebody uh, to run the business for them. And that brings us to management, to management. So when you talk about management, we say they are supposed to be managed, they are managed by the sole trader and uh, in case this sole trader is not there to run the business, um, they may hire somebody or they may employ some other person to do the same for them and pay them at the end of the month. And when they do that, uh, it doesn't mean that this person hired is the one who is going to be answerable when, for the failure or success of the business. The person hired is, is only working for the, 
uh, sole proprietorship or for the sole proprietor. But the sole proprietor remains solely responsible for the failure or success of the business. In some other sole proprietorships, um, the owners may even get the family, close family relatives to help them to run these businesses. And when they do that, uh, they are still responsible. Maybe you are a teacher, maybe you are a doctor, and you have your own business that you're doing, or you start your own business. When you start that business of yours as a sole proprietorship, that you, you can get somebody to run it for you when you are at your work. But when you come in the evening, you must ensure you do all the accounting and you must ensure that your business is doing whatever it is mandated to do. Nothing against the law and also you are making profits. Um, I, I want to move forward and look at sources of capital for a sole proprietorship. Uh, sources of capital, we have looked at the ownership, we have looked at the management, we have looked at the formation, and, and we have also... Um, looked at the meaning of sole proprietorship. So sources, sources of finance or capital, sources of capital for a sole proprietorship. Now this kind of a business requires a small amount of capital, uh, unlike companies which ex uh, require a large amount of capital. And for that reason, um, a sole proprietorship the main source of capital for a sole proprietorship is personal savings. Personal savings being uh, the dream of the sole proprietor to start this kind of a business, they must have a goal. Maybe say that by the end of this year, I want to start a business worth 50,000. So I'm going to save 5,000 for the next 10 months to raise enough capital to raise in this enough capital to um, start my business. When this person does that, that means that the major source of capital is what this person will have saved. And that's why uh, we are saying that the main source of capital for um, sole proprietorship is personal savings. Now, uh, the second source of capital could be borrowing, borrowings or donations, donations uh, from friends, and relatives in case the personal savings are not enough for the sole proprietor uh, to start the business they could maybe get uh, some money or donations from either friends or relatives to caution them to start and run the business that becomes a second source of finance uh, for sole proprietorships the other one is um, Inheritance, inheritance could be a third source. Inheritance, inheritance. Inheritance is what um, a person has gotten maybe from their family members, from their father, from their fa from their mother, or from the family. So whatever you get, maybe you, are, you, have been, uh, you have inherited some cash from the bank, you can use that cash to start and run your business. If maybe you have inherited a piece of land, you can use that land, convert it into money, and then use that money to start and run the business. Uh, when you do that, then inheritance becomes a, a source of finance for sole proprietorships. Then we have leasing and renting, renting out property. Leasing and renting out property. Now, leasing and renting are related words. They are related words, but they mean uh, almost the same thing. When you rent out some property, like most people have uh, stay in rented houses, uh, when you rent out, it means you pay for a, sh a short duration of time, maybe one month, that is renting. So when you have houses or when you have uh, rooms or you have land, you can rent out the land for a short period of like one month, get that money, use that money to start and run the business. Leasing, on the other hand, is long-term renting. So when you give somebody your property, maybe your houses or your land for a long period of time, like one year, then you have leased out that property. And that is to fetch you some more money and you can then you use that money to start and run the business. So leasing and renting out property becomes a source of finance for a sole proprietorship in case of that scenario. Then um, we have reinvesting retained profits. Reinvesting retained 
profits or what we call plowing back profits plowing back profits now when you talk about reinvesting profit that means that um, when you are in business you normally make profits now these profits you can use them for your own personal need or you can just decide to reinvest them back in the business to expand your business. So when you invest the profits that you make every day in your business, then that is what we are calling re uh, reinvesting retained retained uh, profits or plowing back. Plowing back means you are digging them back into the business to ensure your business produces more and more. Let's say um, you, are, you are maybe dealing in the service industry and maybe you are serving like 20 customers in a hotel, you decide to increase the, the size of your hotel by realizing that many there, there, there is a flock of customers flocking into your shop, into your, into your hotel every day. So the profits you make, you can use that to hire another room that is a bit bigger to expand your business. That is what you're calling plowing back or reinvesting uh, retained profit. Number six, we have credit buying. We have credit buying credit buying this means that uh, that you are going to um, get goods that you're going to sell or what you call stock you get your stock of goods through credit you go to somebody who sells on wholesale you get some credit they deliver goods to you once you sell the goods you get the profit and then you pay them their money you you go home with profit you give them what is theirs that is credit buying and on the same uh, another source becomes higher purchase. Higher purchase. Let's say you don't have all the money that you need to get your stock. So you can go pay a small initial deposit and then pay the rest of the money in small installments. These small installments um, you can pay maybe monthly or weekly depending on the agreement between you and the supplier of the goods and services. So higher purchase in this case becomes another source of finance or capital for um, a sole proprietorship. And then uh, we have lastly government institutions government institutions government institutions this is a current uh, trend this is a current trend or an emerging issue in uh, business nowadays the government uh, especially the previous government is the one that initiated some of these programs we have programs like the Uezo fund Uezo fund these were initiated to try and help uh, marginalized people or people who cannot be able to raise capital for their businesses to start uh, their businesses. So when you go and get a loan through Wesel Fund, you start your own business, then that becomes a source of finance. We also have what we call Youth, Develop Youth Enterprise Development Fund, Youth Enterprise Development Fund. Youth Enterprise Development Fund is a fund by the government to help the youths um, or to empower the youths to start their businesses. So when you go and apply for this money through maybe the CDF or the, 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 uh, the member of parliament's office and then you get this money, that money, that money becomes a source of capital for starting a sole proprietorship. We also have the Women, Women Enterprise Fund, Women, uh, Women Enterprise Fund, the Women Enterprise Fund. Enterprise, this money is for the, for the women and um, mostly it's allocated to uh, women groups. So when they come together, they take this money, the money can be divided into groups and they can go and start their individual businesses. When they start their individual businesses, then that becomes a so source of finance for sole proprietorships. Now, those are some of the sources of capital we have talked about. Uh, personal savings are the main source. We have talked about donations or borrowings from friends and relatives. We have talked about inheritance. We have talked about uh, leasing or renting out property. We have talked about reinvesting retained profit. We have talked about credit buying. We have talked about higher purchase and government institutions. Then I'll move to um, the, the other thing which is advantages and disadvantages. 
advantages and disadvantages of sole proprietorships. So for advantages of sole proprietorships, sole proprietorships have got quite a number of advantages. One is that uh, there are few legal formalities or there are few legal requirements. The first advantage is that is that there are few few uh, legal procedures to start and run a sole proprietorship. There are few legal procedures. We have said what you need is that uh, you just need um, a certificate of registration and then you are good to go. The other, the other advantage is it requires a small amount of capital. Uh, looking at most of the uh, sole proprietorships, they are not very large. For example, if you want to start a, a vegetable stall, if you want to start a vegetable stall, you may need something to do with 20,000 shillings and you are good to go. Uh, that means that uh, it's a small amount of capital that you need to put up that business. We have people who go around selling um, eggs. We have people who go selling samosas. We have people out there doing small businesses, what they can be able to afford. So that's an advantage with sole proprietorships. But for a company, you may need a lot of money. You may need to employ people, so on and so forth. But we have other bigger um, sole proprietorships that even have got departments like uh, like we talk about a school. If you want to start a private school, you may need to employ teachers, you may need to employ uh, security guards, you may need to employ a finance officer, you may need to have departments in the institution, which means that you may need to get a, a, a little bit more capital. But uh, it's an advantage that most, most, most of the sole proprietorships uh, require um, a small amount of capital. Then number three, um, is quick decision making process. There's a quick decision making process. Quick decision and implementation. Quick decision making process being that uh, the, the business is run by a sole trader, then uh, this person does not need to consult anybody when they want to make any decision or when they want to implement something. They just need to consult themselves. Even if they might have employed somebody or they are having their relatives running the business, they may not need to consult them to make a decision because the business uh, is solely uh, theirs. So there's quick decision making and that's an advantage. Advantage number three is owner enjoys profit alone. The owner enjoys, owner enjoys profit alone. It's a winner take it home or take it all, whereby the profit that you get in the business belongs to you as a sole proprietor. You don't need to share your, with anybody. That becomes a very big advantage to, um, to a sole proprietor, enjoying the profits alone. Then number five or number four is owner is accountable to himself or herself. Owner is accountable to himself or herself. Accountable to self. What do you mean by accountable to self? When you are accountable to yourself, it means that you are not answerable to another person. When, what, what time you close, what time you open is all dependent on you, not another person. That is um, on accountability. In case maybe you feel that uh, you need to use that cash that you have in the shop for any other reason, or maybe you have a problem, you need to fix your, your problem using the money, you are not to ask anybody any permission, you are accountable to yourself in that case. It's not a good business practice, but in case of anything, you are accountable to yourself. Um, number five is it's a flexible business. It's flexible. It is a flexible business. So uh, flexibility comes in the sense that um, you you can shift you can shift your business or you can you can go move to another line in case you're not comfortable in the line you're dealing with 
or in case you realize that there are so many risks. Normally, when you are starting a business, you may, real, you may, you may have seen somebody making a lot of money, and then you hope into the business uh, with a lot of expectation that you're going to break even like that other person. But when, as you progress in the business, you realize that you are not making the money that you anticipated, and therefore, you can shift your line. Maybe you had a shop, and then you realize that um, this shop is not making good money. And then you, you get, you, you see that this place needs an hotel, or there are few hotels around this place. And then you hope, move from hotel, uh, from shop, from a retail shop to a hotel. That one is, that is what brings the flexibility in a business. Secondly, uh, where we have flexibility, in case you're moving from one town to another, maybe you've been transferred, maybe where you've been transferred from a job, maybe uh, you are working in, let's say in, in Ongata Rongai, and then you are moved now to Juja. You may require now to move your business to Juja. It is easier when you don't consult anybody and when you are dealing with a sole proprietorship. Um, the other one is um, the owner can hire somebody. The owner can hire somebody. Owner can hire somebody. Can hire someone. When you, you are able to hire somebody, it means you can do two jobs at the same time. You can even, you can even uh, start two businesses and run them at the same time. Concurrently, that is, you can have one shop in one place and another one in another place. You hire people, they run the business for you. What you do, you ensure you supply the goods to the business. You ensure you do your, 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 your books of account properly to ensure you don't make losses, to ensure you don't make losses. So this is an advantage. Then uh, the last advantage, or second last, the owner maintains secrets and the privacy of the business. The owner can maintain secrets, secrets and privacy of the business. This one is very important in business. Every business has got its own secrets. Nobody knows, if you see a, a full shop, nobody knows if you bought those goods on credit or on higher purchase. It is you, the owner of the business. And that secret is very important to keep uh, as a business. Maybe you have a few debtors. Debtors are people we have given out goods in a business. So you have debtors out there that uh, have taken your goods on credit. Nobody is supposed to know that they have taken goods out there. And that is why, because this business is owned by one person, it is easier to keep secrets or privacy of the business. That brings me to the last advantage, which is um, the sole uh, trader is able to assess, to assess the credibility or the the the, cred, uh, the the credit worthiness the credit worthiness the credit worthiness of the customers the sole trader is able uh, to assess the credit worthiness of the customers now when 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 you are in the business you're able to know who buys who is honest who comes to your shop every now and then and um, that means that if this person is in dire need of some goods and they come to you and tell you, I want to, to take some credit, you know person A is credit worth more than person B, and then you give this person uh, some credit. That means you are reducing your chances of, um, of having what you call bad debts, reducing chances of bad debts. Bad debts are people who take things from you and never pay or come to pay after a very long period of time and uh, that becomes a, a bad uh, loss to the business. So it's an advantage when you're a sole proprietor. You're able to ac access the credit worthiness of your customers and know who is who is more liable and who is not. And then those are some of the advantages. We have said that um, sole proprietorships have got few legal formalities or few legal procedures. Uh, you just need a trading license and you're good to go. A small amount of capital is required to start. And then quick decision or implementation, a quick decision making process and implementation in a sole proprietorship. Then we have the owner enjoys profit alone. This is a very good advantage, and uh, account uh, the owner is accountable to self. They don't report to anybody. They only report themselves. And then we have the flexibility bit, whereby the owner can shift from one line to the other, or is able to move the business from one place to the other. Then the last three, owner can hire somebody to run the business. Uh, owner can keep secrets. And lastly, they are able to assess the credit worthiness 
of the customers. Now, uh, then I'll move to disadvantages. 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 Disadvantages of sole proprietorships. Everything that has got pros has got cons. So on the other side of the coin, we are able to look at the disadvantages vis our advantages that we have here. And one of the major disadvantages is that the owner has got One is that the owner has got unlimited, unlimited liabilities. Okay. So when we talk about unlimited liabilities, this means that um, in case the business incurs some debts, you have gone to buy goods on credit, you have bought goods on higher purchase, and you are unable to pay for those goods, then it means that you as the owner of the business will your property, your personal property will be taken. That means that in front of law, a sole proprietorship versus a sole proprietor are one thing. They are not separate in, in front of law. So whatever belongs to the sole proprietor can be taken to pay for debts for the sole proprietorship or for the business in case the owner is not able to settle the debts. Uh, that's a very big disadvantage. That's a very big disadvantage because you might go get goods, uh, maybe something happens on the way, an accident, they get spoiled, or maybe even uh, you get an accident with a vehicle and they, they are, the goods become distorted, but you still have to pay for them. So in case you're not able to pay in cash, your property can be taken, and that's a very big disadvantage. Note that learners, it is unlimited, liabilities to the business, unlimited liabilities. And uh, then secondly, we have limited sources of capital, limited sources of capital, limited sources of capital. And uh, because of limited sources of capital, look at the sources of capital that we have talked about. We have talked about uh, inheritance, we have talked about borrowing from friends and relatives, things that you cannot even um, be very sure uh, of about except for personal savings. Now, because of these, this limits the growth of a sole proprietorship form of business unit. It limits the growth of a sole proprietorship form of business unit. And then number three, we have uh, poor decision making. Poor decision making could arise because uh, the sole trader consults nobody. Lack of consultation could lead to poor decision making. Poor decision making could lead to collapse or, uh, or, or a decline in, 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 in the service provision by the sole proprietorship. And this could be a very big disadvantage. Normally in companies, it's very, it, it, uh, the decision making is very slow, but there is a lot of consultation. And this helps to keep them, uh, to keep what we call checks and balances uh, in place. But for a sole proprietorship, there, is, there could be poor decision making uh, because there is lack of consultation. Number four, we have owner may lack expertise. The owner may lack expertise. And when the owner lacks expertise to, to perform all business functions, then uh, we say that uh, the business operations could not be doing uh, very well. Let's say, for example, you are in the hotel industry. And uh, you, start, you, start, you started by doing what you can do at home. You can normally cook. Then you reach at a point where you want to start baking. And you are you're, you're not an expert in baking. Then you find yourself doing something that is not pleasing the customers, and the customers will start running away, which means lack of exp expertise in sole proprietorships has led to failure of many, many, many of them. Uh, then we have um, the owner suffers losses alone. This is a disadvantage, which is almost similar to the advantage of owner enjoying profit alone. So you enjoyed the profit alone, yes, but when it comes to losses, you also suffer alone, which becomes a disadvantage on the other side. And that means you have nobody to help caution you in case of losses. It is only you as a sole trader, only you as a sole proprietor. Then uh, we have um, number six, Owner may have to work long hours. The owner may have to work long hours because um, you, you, you know you're looking for money. So you open a business, you go even up to midnight, you open very early in the morning, and that means uh, you forget your personal life. Uh, sometimes uh, the business takes over you and um, uh, you, you sacrifice your personal life uh, 
uh, for the business. That is a very bad disadvantage. You forget your family, you forget your relatives, your energy is all concentrated on, on your business. That is a very big disadvantage. And then um, lastly, um, sorry, those are some of the disadvantages. We have talked about unlimited liabilities, unlimited liabilities whereby in case of a debt or in case of debts, the property of the owner can be taken to pay for the debts of the business. Number two, we have said there are limited sources of capital. There are limited sources of capital. We have talked about the sources of capital here previously, and we said most of them are small. And again, because these are small businesses, if you go to a bank to take a loan, uh, the bank looks at your eligibility criteria. They have an eligibility criteria, criteria that they look at. So because they are small businesses, we expect them to have small assets. We expect them then to qualify for a smaller amount of money compared to bigger businesses. And that limits them. And because of that limited source of capital, that means uh, growth is also limited. Uh, poor decision making, we have talked about that. Uh, we have said that uh, there is no consultation and this could lead to collapse of the business. We have talked about um, lack of expertise. We have talked about uh, the owner suffering losses alone. We have also lastly talked about the owner being uh, tiresome because of working for long and uh, sacrificing their personal life for the business. And that's a disadvantage. So I'll look at the last thing on sole proprietorship, which is called dissolution. I'll look at dissolution. Now, when you talk about dissolution, Dissolution means, means bringing to an end. Like salt and, uh, and uh, sugar dissolves in tea and water or uh, food. Um, the business can just vanish and go to an end. And these are some of the circumstances that may lead to dissolution of sole proprietorships, forms of business units. One is um, <coughs> the owner's decision to dissolve the business. One is the owner's decision. If the owner decides that um, um, I'm, I, I, I started this business, I'm not making profits, so I want to stop running the business. If it's their decision, they may terminate this business, they may bring it to an end, and that is one of the circumstances under which dissolution may take place. Number two is upon death, disability, or insanity of the owner. Remember the owner is the brain of the is the engine of the business so if the if the engine is dead the business is dead if they are incapable if, if they they became they become they have disabilities for example and they can no longer do whatever they have been doing then uh, or they are at home they are bedridden on or in an hospital bed then that means the business comes to an end in case of insanity 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 this word insanity means uh, having mental health issues. That means if they have mental health issues, the, bi the business um, cannot continue uh, running. Then <coughs> number three is bankruptcy of the owner. Bankruptcy. When we talk about bankruptcy, means that the owner does not have the financial muscle, does not have the financial energy uh, to be able to run uh, the business. Businesses require money each and every moment, each and every day. You need to go pick goods, you need to go uh, pay for electricity, you need to do A, B, C, D. So if the person finds that they are bankrupt and they don't have money to run the business, then they can close the business or bring it to an end. Then number four is a passing of a law which renders activities of the business illegal. If a law is passed, if a law is passed, the laws change each and every day. If a law is passed rendering the business illegal, then that means you close the business. For example, a few years ago, the Nakada, Nakada had started saying that uh, Mira business, uh, or they had started thinking about Mira, they, had looking, they were looking at Mira as a drug. If that law was passed, then all the Mira stalls around our towns would have shut down, meaning that all those sole proprietors would have closed their business, or else they would have gone to court um, and faced the law. Um, <clears throat> for example, we have seen the sale of cigarettes taking stages in the country. A, a few years ago, people used to take cigarettes everywhere. Nowadays, uh, you cannot just take cigarettes in public. Maybe in future, I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm just trying to think, 
if the government puts a law and says that uh, cigarettes are banned in Kenya, that means everybody in the cigarette industry, from the producer to the to sole proprietors, um, they will have to shut down the business, and that will bring what we call dissolution. And then uh, we have, lastly, expiry of the operating period. Expiry of the operating period. Maybe a sole proprietorship was started to operate for a small period of time, maybe one month, two months. Um, let's say, for example, uh, there's the Nairobi show. You, you decide the agricultural show. Um, you want to start a business. You realize that people may need food for that month. Those who are doing the constructions as they prepare and that week or two weeks of the, of the national show. So you open a business to only run for that month. Sell food to those people who are doing the construction. Afterwards, sell to those people who will come for the show. And then close when the show closes. So when the show is over, you end up dissolving the business. If you had some other hotel somewhere, you can take your, your things there. If you didn't have, you can wait for next year again when the show comes in place. So those are some of the circumstances in which dissolution or uh, bringing to an end of a sole proprietorship can take place. We have said one is uh, owners, uh, the owner's decision to dissolve the business. Mm -hmm. Two, we have talked about the death, the disability or insanity of the sole proprietor in case of death, uh, disability or insanity. Insanity is the mental health um, of the sole proprietor. In case it happens, then the business ends because this is the brain of the business and the person who is running the business. We have talked about bankruptcy of the owner. This is in terms of money. If the owner does not have money to run the business, then they can decide to dissolve the business. Then we have talked about passing of a law which may render the business illegal. If the, a law is passed that rendering the business illegal, then the business must stop. And lastly, expiry of the operating period. Expiry of the operating period of which the business was supposed to operate. In case the period is over, that means the end to the business. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, for listening to me. So in conclusion, we have looked at the formation. We have looked at, uh, let's start, we have looked at uh, one, we have looked at the meaning and we have said that a sole proprietorship is a business that is start and run by one person who is called a sole trader or a sole proprietor or a sole owner. Two, we have looked at ownership and we have said it is owned by this sole trader this sole proprietor or this sole owner. Number three, we have looked at uh, formation. We have said there are few legal formalities that are required to form this kind of a business, whereby you just need to pop into the county government offices, get a trading license, pay for it, a few, uh, few shillings, and then you are good to go. So the formation, um, there are few legal formalities or few legal procedures. And then ownership, we have talked, sorry, uh, management, management. We have said that uh, the sole trader is the one that manages the sole proprietorship. They could also get help from a family member or they could hire somebody to run for it. But they are solely responsible for failure or success of the business. And number five, we have looked at sources of capital, quite a number. We have looked at quite a number of sources of capital. We have looked at advantages and disadvantages. Um, <coughs> we have also looked at uh, dissolution. We have looked at dissolution. Those are the things that we have looked at. Uh, I, I'm sure you have been able to view the slides. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you for all, of, for all our viewers. Um, we are very happy. I uh, can see the comments coming through. I'm happy for my parents, those who are viewing me, for my students. I wish you all the best in your, uh, in your learning. I also want to say hi to those watching me from home, my, my father and mother. And um, thank you so much. That was our lesson. Have a good afternoon.